All right, Jenny, we are live. Great, thank you, Chase. Good afternoon, everybody. And we will call the uh, January 14th ART meeting to order. Uh, Lori, could you call the roll, please? Yes. Mr. Fagrell? Mr. Fagrell? Ms. Gilger? Present, sorry. Ms. Rausch? Here. Mr. Krowski? Here. Ms. Hamilton? Here. Corporal Morris? I'm present. Okay. And Aaron Stanford? Here. Great, thank you very much. Um, we have minutes from December 17th um, before us today. I didn't see any corrections um, come through. Uh, does anybody have any modifications to that? Um, if not, then we can go ahead and make a motion um, to approve. Does anybody have any corrections? Okay, could I get a motion uh, to approve the minutes from December 17th? Yes. And a second. I'll second. Okay, Lori, can you call the roll for that? Mr. Stanford? Yes. Ms. Gilger? Yes. Mr. Fagrell? Yes. Ms. Roush? Yes. Mr. Hamilton? Yes. Corporal Morris? Yes. Mr. Koretsky? Yes. Great. So this afternoon we have three items on our agenda. Uh, one is an introduction and then we have two determinations. Um, so the first one is Dublin Village Center uh, West Facade Improvement. And I believe Nikki is our case presenter or Zach um, for that case. Um, that's modifications to the exterior of the shopping center at Dublin Village Center. Um, and as I mentioned, this is an introduction. Great. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Great. Uh, good afternoon. As mentioned, this is um, an introduction to the administrative review team for uh, facade and site modifications uh, within Dublin Village Center. Uh, the site um, is located in the northwest portion um, of the shopping plaza. Um, within the Bridge Street District. Uh, the site is zoned Bridge Street District Sawmill Center neighborhood and is uh, just east of Sawmill Road and west of Village Parkway. In detail, uh, the building in question is the former Farmore site. The Dublin Village Center is a series of large format commercial style buildings, which include an AMC anchor tenant, the subject portion of the site is highlighted on your screen in red and is the west facade of this existing commercial building. This is a proposed site plan with north to the left hand side of your screen. As mentioned, the applicant is intending to update the facade as well as the site in order to um, achieve the goals and objectives of the Bridge Street District Area Plan by activating this facade as well as providing outdoor amenities. The intent is to provide smaller tenant spaces within this uh, large format commercial building for both um, office and retail tenants. The plaza uh, shown on your screen um, incorporates a variety of hardscape and landscape materials. The hardscape materials are intended to mimic um, dark brick, dark gray brick that is found elsewhere within the Bridge Street District. There are two seating plazas on either side of the uh, central walkway 
uh, which will provide opportunity for the applicant to select future um, outdoor seating amenities, um, which would be um, either included in a revision with to this application or subject to staff approval with a future minor project review determination. Additionally, you'll note here there is lawn space uh, to the north hand side or the left of your screen, um, which these uh, tenants will have access to. And the right hand side of your screen um, is a proposed mechanical enclosure. There are existing mechanical mechanicals located in this portion of the site. Um, including generators. The applicant is proposing to revise and modify the extent of that enclosure. The applicant is still working through the exterior material for that enclosure as Corton Steel was originally proposed. However, given examples elsewhere within the Bridge Street District, the applicant has elected uh, to use a material that is more uh, low maintenance and not prone to staining. Um, staff has recommended the applicant pursue a brick enclosure, and the applicant is investigating a variety of other materials. With this application not shown on the screen, parking is proposed to be modified. The parking will be reduced um, by approximately 30 spaces. This modification will not impact the ability uh, for this site to provide the necessary parking as there is an abundance of parking surrounding. The applicant is also proposing modifications to this elevation. The elevation is similarly intended to be responsive to materials that you see throughout the Bridge Street District. The applicant is proposing new storefront systems in order to further define each tenant space. With this uh, new uh, phenolinic panel is proposed to be the primary cladding material. Uh, this is a polymer panel um, that has uh, color fast qualities as well as um, durability over time. Additionally, the base of the um, architectural modification is proposed to be clad in stone veneer. Uh, staff has identified that phenolinic panel is not a permitted primary or secondary material within the Bridge Street District and has encouraged the applicant to pursue alternative materials, specifically uh, cementitious siding or architectural metal panel um, with a particular focus on the latter, which may provide an opportunity for a similar character and installation detail. A portion of the building is proposed to be painted a dark gray while the remainder of the building will retain the existing color. The uh, change in color occurs at the um, interior corner of a facade return. Uh, both staff and the applicant are seeking um, the ART's input today on a variety of items, um, including the mechanical enclosure, um, landscape plan and existing overhead utility easement, as well as the proposed architectural modifications. With that, um, I would be happy to answer any questions. Otherwise, the applicant and their team is here as well today. Great, thank you, Nikki. Um, I will um, maybe let the applicant speak first and see if there's anything they wanna add and then we can open it up to questions and discussion. Um, from the group. So I, Kevin and Greg, I believe you're both on here. Do you have any additional um, information to share with us? Welcome, by the way. <laughs> hey, yeah, thanks, thanks, Kevin McCauley. Um, yeah, we have uh, Greg Chillog with us today. If for any questions, obviously on the landscape plan, uh, any of the hardscape materials. And then as far as for the architecture, we also have Dean Baumgartner from Ford and Associates uh to discuss any any architectural relevant questions you guys may have uh i think nikki did a, a great job just covering the basics of this uh it's kind of speaks for itself and that it, it there's a it, it's a great improvement to an area that that could definitely use it uh we're excited about it um the one thing that that nikki had mentioned was uh you know is this going to be multi-tenant spaces or single single user uh originally when we started this project before COVID, we would have saying looked at this as a, a definitely marketing towards 
um, a few multi-tenant spaces. But now we have a real opportunity with COVID here that some we can maybe offer this building to a single user as it's an enclosed building that they get everything to themselves and they don't have to share elevators with people or share outdoor spaces with people or or share their space. Uh, so we, we have some flexibility with the space. So I didn't want to pin that down to just multi-user tenants um, to say that we've got a variety of uses. And I think we've got a strong uh, opportunity with people that maybe want to be in the Bridge Street area, but maybe can't afford what Bridge Street offers as far as rent goes, and we can bring them in and at a at a, a better price, so to speak, but in offering them uh, something that's close by and a great building as well. So I don't really have a lot to say outside of that over the building, the uh, landscape and architecture. So I would probably say, unless Green or De Greg or Dean have something specific to add, uh, really toss it out for questions and go from there. Dean, Greg, speak up if you do, otherwise uh, let Jenny go. Okay. Great. Thank you, Kevin. Um, and yeah, I definitely appreciate the opportunity um, to see this, this side of the building um, improved. And I know staff, at least amongst our initial discussions internally, are really pleased with, with you bringing this forward and how to work with you and, and make that happen. Um, does anybody have any initial questions? Yes, Ms. Colleen. So I know that you've got the You've got the brick wall out there now, and it is a nice shielding wall for the dumpsters that are back there. So I'm curious, um, it seems like this tenant space will have doors on both the west and east um, sides of this building. So I'm curious how you plan to handle trash removal and location of dumpsters for whoever might go into these spaces, assuming that they are going to have doors on, on both sides of this building. Uh, yeah, Colleen, if we were, um, it depends on how many users ultimately come into this space and how we divide the space up. Uh, it is a, it is, it's a square box. It's 200 by 200. So ideally we could cut it in half either way. We could cut it in fourths. Um, there's many ways we could do it, but on the North end of this side of this building where you don't see this, um, it's the, uh, that's where we have a relocation of, uh, the dumpster area for multi-tenant spaces. So it would be around the kind of the back side of this building is where we have it. There's a there's a currently a dock that comes into the back side of this building, which is on that north side. So it's on the if you're looking at the drawing, the the color drawings of the elevations, it would be on the left side, kind of around the corner, because uh, the building has a as a tilt to it, and it it, go, it it goes back towards the north. So back in that area, uh, there's already. Um, that that kind of an area set up for the other tenants for the rest of the building that go on along to the north so we're just going to relocate this drive aisle and service bay to around that side and then eliminate the service bay eliminate that block wall bring in the the new new window storefronts uh and create that the on the on the right side where we have the uh, utility enclosures will also have doors there that will be a new enclosure as nikki said whether that's going to be um, wood, metal, brick, whatever that we need to finalize that, uh, that will hide that enclosure on the right side of this building where you see those utility boxes shown. And is the intent then to also keep the doors on the, on the other facade, um, the other side of the building then, so there's dual entry points to the space? At this time, yes, especially if we get a single user, you'll have the front entrance, so uh, maybe that's where you're clients or somebody come in or not. And then you also have the back entrance for uh, same thing. Maybe it's a different client or just your, your employees. But yes, at, if it was one user, it's definitely both sides. You're going to go from front to back. Parking on both sides. Okay. Any other questions, Aaron? Yeah, real quick, Kevin. Um, I know that there's that there's an electrical easement on this site, and what I've I've heard or read is that the limits or the restrictions on those have changed recently with some of the changes that AP has made. Um, doesn't impact what we're doing here today, but I'm wondering, do you do you guys have a copy of what's been updated by AEP? I think what it would help is as you move forward to permitting. I think we'd want to see that just to make sure that we're not approving anything in their easements that wouldn't be permitted. Yeah, we have a, a revised easement document okay. um, that we did with them that we could, I'll send over to you, Aaron, uh, that, that shows you that 
it's we're still outside of those easement limits. But yes, I could send that to you with the new work they're doing on the mono poles. Uh, we we made sure we got that in place, so we have that, and I can send that over to you. Great, I appreciate that. Thank you, Sean. Uh, <clears throat> excuse my voice. Uh, in the landscape plan we're showing, try form for maples uh, as well as boxwoods. I know the maples tend to not enjoy being in urban sites. Uh, and the boxwoods are going to be very intolerant of salt, uh, both of which will more than likely happen in this plaza. I'm going to let Greg handle that, but uh, maybe agree, Greg, you go from there. <laughs> Sean, Sean, we've tried to plant just about every plant out here and <laughs> um, we've had varying degrees of success on the same plant in various locations. Um, uh, so, I mean, everything we're, we're doing out here is a trial and error. And, the, and right now, this is kind of what we set on. The boxwoods, you know, there are other substitutes we can make for those. Um, that, that's not a big deal. I, just, I, I see them failing very quickly uh, when salt's put down. The maple, you might be able to you know, modify the soil and make sure that you've got well-drained soils and stuff, but not having a more open lawn area for them is going to be very tough to get that established and have it grow. I would, I would suggest maybe looking at a different, a different species, maybe a frontier elm or something that's a little more urban tolerant. Yeah, we'll continue to look. Um, I know for a fact we'll continue to to investigate the plant material probably up until um it goes in the ground um just based on um how particular matt matt and kevin are with, with the landscape um so we will certainly consider that and um continue to evaluate it as we as we go forward here okay uh, any other questions i have a couple brad go ahead um, yeah, so I saw in the elevation view, you showed all those utilities on the side of the building, but you have, it shows like on that plan view, showed quite a large enclosure. So are there like generators or other things in there? Or, I mean, you wouldn't normally do that big of an enclosure just for utilities on the wall. Uh, uh, you'd have to look on the one drawing. Uh, it's, it, it, it's somewhat hard to see. Um, there are two train electrical transformers uh at greg's like site plan enlargement two i think is what it's called just inside the wall he's got a kind of a dotted line or dashed line around two transformers so today if you came out here and looked the block or the the brick wall is behind those transformers the transfer sit in front of the block the, the the brick wall nearest uh the parking lot we are going to move that fence uh, area with the, the enclosure to in, to enclose those two transformers. If you look just on that left and the right side of the gates, you see two little block, uh, square boxes there. That's where Greg has outlined the transformer. So we're going to enclose those transformers just for uh, it. One, it fits and it squares everything off as, as they've already made it. Uh, and two, it hides those transformers. So we're hiding the transformers along with um all the all the uh utility boxes already out that are out there so it just cleaned okay. it up and made it look nice okay yeah it makes sense and, and nikki did you um bring up about core 10 is that that area yes. where you're proposing that and there was some concerns about that okay what what are your thoughts about that greg or kevin about choosing a different material out there um what we, we talked about trying to um, come up with a design for that enclosure that really starts to, to play off the architecture design as more, more so than just selecting an, an, a material that's kind of a one-off for this des particular design. Um, so I think we're gonna investigate that and it's probably gonna be a combination of material, some masonry included in that, uh, maybe some metal panel or wood, um, something that, that starts to play off of the, the architectural designs, I, I think is the route to go here. Okay, that's helpful. Jenny, we're definitely um, happy to work, continue to work with, uh, put a condition on, continue to work with Nikki or staff on finalizing that design. Uh, I think we had a good discussion yesterday with her, and, and we were, as we told her, we were just learning about 
uh, the staining as of Monday, we kind of learned about, hey, this might be a product that's not the one you want to use. Um, so we were trying to find something quickly. And, and she said possibly we could just make a condition that we'll continue to work with staff on that as we get closer to permitting and find out a material that works. Um, but we're happy with, I mean, if she said uh, make it all, uh, all uh, an entire masonry wall, we said we'd be you know happy to do that. We want to maybe be a little bit more creative, but you know we're we're not not opposed to just doing that as well. So we're going to work with her on that if that works. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we can definitely as you move forward with this and come back, you know, for the final determination, you can we can talk through what those what those pieces are, which I guess sort of gets to the use of the a different secondary material than what's proposed to. And I guess I wanted to get your thoughts because we have had a lot of discussions internally with staff and then we've had um, recent discussions with the planning commission on another application, um, just really trying to stick to those um, secondary materials as, as they're shown. Um, and I, I understand you guys had a meeting to talk through some alternatives for the, for the materials, but I wanted to get your sense on that as well. Uh, similar to the, to the product uh, well, to use the on the gates, I think um, we are not opposed to talking to continue to work with staff on finding that alternative material, such as a, a hardy plank. Um, I think ultimately, I think maybe I'd like to get it, Nikki, um, the sample to you. I think when you see the sample, whether or not again it's a permittable or not, is is going to be the question, but. Um, ultimately, I think we believe what we have selected to be a far superior product, both in uh, maintenance, looks, quality, than a hardy plank. What we are presenting is, I I'm just going to say, like a higher end mahogany look product. You know, it's that it's that high end feel where we're not opposed to hardy plank, but it, in no way is hardy plank as nice as this. Um, I think it would be like. 10 years ago, when we started talking about sidings on houses, we used to say, oh, stucco is so much better than everything else. And now we have so much better products than stucco. And it's just where things have come and how they're coming along. So that would be our our debate. Um, yeah, it, you know, just keep it. Sorry, I was listening. Um, it just it's a it's a maintenance item as well. You know, so like this product that we're coming with has like it's got a 10 year warranty just for fate. It's got a 20 year, year warranty to, to, for make non maintenance. So we are a Western facing um, facade with that Western facing facade. We, we're getting baked in the sun. So we're trying to find that product that we're not going to be out there painting every year and having fade spots and having a deteriorate just from, from getting beaten up through that sun in the wind and the rain. Um, so this is that product that, that, Ford Associates has gone out and investigated and inspect and said, if you want the a premium product, this is it. So by by far no means are we finding a cheaper, lower end product and trying to say we're not spending money. This is the best product that we our architects are expecting to say it's it's high end. Um, my my last this my last point, and this comes from the manufacturer. I think they might be selling and I'm going to try and sell you as well. The the manufacturer sent me a note and they say that the these are these are made from wood or paper products mis mixed with melamine resin it's a green it's green and made in the usa it's environmentally preferred and socially responsible product its core is paper so when we say it has to be a natural material it's wood in all intents and purposes at the end of the day i want to make the argument that this is a natural made man, you know, natural material, just as when we go back and we look at, okay, now we're saying that uh, hardy plank is an approved natural material when it's made with cement. It, it's, it's wood and cement. Mine is wood and resin. So I'm not sure um, how to say we could say no to this, but say yes to hardy plank in the same discussion. If you told me I'm not allowed to use this and I'm not allowed to use hardy plank, then I'd probably say, Okay, I agree with the comment and we can move on and I got to find wood and cedar or brick. But because I'm allowed to use hardy plank and that's based on the fact that we're calling that a, a, a natural material because it has wood in it. I don't know how anybody could deny this product, but it's not been approved, but that doesn't mean it can't be approved by you because it's a natural product. 
So if that's not going to be the case and, and Nikki, I can't sell you on this and I can't show you the product and you can't buy off on it. Um, ultimately, yes, we'll agree to a, a, a different product. Um, and, and we'll take that. But what I think what we're also seeing is I think there are three different examples in Bridge Park today. Uh, Penn Zones, um, my mind's going to slip. Uh, the new conference center and down in um, down in Bridge Park that have used Teller Flats also have used this similar type product. Ours is even higher end. No, I won't say the conference center, but ours is higher end than the other two. Um, I don't know exactly the conference center material. So we know it's an approvable product, but only to P and Z. But yet it's 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 as approvable as Hardy Plan. So I won't go on. I'll leave it at that. We'd like to use this material because we think it looks phenomenal. It's great. Um, but at the end of the day, if, if this board can't agree with me on that and says, hey, we can't approve, we can approve the project for a hardy plank and you can go to PNZ and fight for the use of your product, I can consider doing that. I may elect not to. I may elect not to do all of this work uh, at, at all because it just stems into the fact that we're, we may, we want it to look as nice as we can. We've hired people. Uh, experts to tell us what looks good, and we believe this looks really nice, to take a step back and use an inferior product just because it's approvable doesn't tend to sit as well with us. So I'll leave it at that. Well, it's helpful background. I appreciate that. And I guess just a few clarifying things. So, I mean, the materials as Bridge Street allows, as you mentioned, so there's primary and there's secondary materials that are approved but there is the alternative option to go to planning commission. Again, if it's not one of the ones that are listed, you can make your case um, to planning commission and show that. And again, their discussion as of late was, you know, wanting to see where this has been used elsewhere because you have to demonstrate obviously that this has been used um, successfully in the region. Um, again, because they want to make sure as you are, that this is, you know, this is a high quality product. Um, and again, we can con continue to talk through um, you know, as you work with Nikki on this, you know, how, how that, how that plays out and how you want to, how you want to proceed with that. Again, I think we're supportive of you moving forward with this, the project overall, and really want to try to work with you to make that happen. Um, again, the materials part, the code, again, provides that option for you to, for you to ask to use something other than what's currently listed. And that's why that's in there because you're right. Technology changes over time. And when we developed the Bridge Street code, these were the materials that were approved at that point but planning commission and council knew going into it that there were going to be things that came up um new materials you know to look at and consider as part of projects and they wanted to provide that opportunity so um i mean that's that's definitely helpful background and materials hey jenny yep hi matt i can't see your face <laughs> there you are hi so uh you know, I, I do appreciate your restrictions and, and limitations on what you can and can't do. I just want to make sure I understand if it's a uh, if it's being used in Bridge Park, and maybe it's not. Okay, but I I think I think it is because I drive by, I see the conference center. It looks pretty good. Penn Zones, it's definitely used a comparable product, if not the exact, and also at the clubhouse of Taller Flats, and I think it, they all look pretty good what that, that's almost like a court like a supreme court or a court case where they say hey this is a good product and we've set precedent that it's an okay product i would think that that would give you the the uh, evidence or the confirmation to make a decision i mean i would think that's why they put you in the positions that you're in but i i do respect the uh being reticent or um cautious of, of making that decision without following the letter of the law perfectly. But what I don't want to do is I I know what this, I like Hardy Plank a lot and it's cheaper, but it doesn't really, in my, Dean, Dean may disagree, Dean Baumgartner from Ford, but I don't think it shows, it, it doesn't provide the texture. This product that I'm looking at has almost like a mahogany look to it. So when it's stained, that, that wood, that wood grain comes out. If you go to a typical, like Piata has a real nice looking uh, gray black that they used and it, I like it a ton, but it's faded really bad and it has no real character to it as a real, it's, it's just a nice cedar looking uh, blank 
piece of exterior veneer that, that's a lot better than stucco and some other maybe alternatives. So what I don't want to do is get, go back to PNZ and open up a, a whole can of worms. And what this, if we can't find something that I think looks good, but rather, you know, just doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't get the look that we're after. This is very expensive. And part of me says, why don't we just do the hardscape, clean up the delivery area and pop a bunch of windows on the facade and we'll save a ton of money rather than doing it halfway or half asset, you know what I mean? And, and, and so I don't want to go through the, the, this process. I think you do have the ability to approve this. And I'd like you to consider it. If you won't, I respect you guys. And I'll respect that decision. But it may it may cause us to we're definitely going to improve this, but I'm not going to I'm not going to spend a bunch of money and, ha and and do something just to conform to a technicality. Because you guys have, again, the bridge seat, you can't build, you can, no code can be built to be flexible enough to incorporate future products. I think you guys acknowledge that we said it. So, you know, that would be terrible if, if we didn't do something. I think it'd be terrible for Dublin. So that, that's, that's our deal. We get, we got, we got to get going. We Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't on. That, that's all. <laughs> that's all I really had to offer. Okay. No, that's, again, that's helpful. Um, I guess I'd be curious from Dean, your perspective and we, and again, we need to look into these, the other locations that you're talking about, because I'm not familiar with those using this particular material. If it's something similar and there's precedent for that, again, I think that's something that planning commission would take into consideration um, for the review of this. And we can again, look at it um, as you move forward. Um, I just, I don't have that off. I don't have that information in front of me. Um, and I know Nikki wanted to do a little bit more research to, to that material. Ancient code. Dean, what's your gear, guys? Hey, Jay. Yeah, this is Dean. Um, I mean, uh, Jeff and Kevin do have a, a sample of it, um, you know, in comparison with just the hardy plank, uh, you know, it is, it has a better grain, better look, better quality. Um, <clears throat> So, I mean, we've specif specified it a few times. Can't say it's been built yet, but uh, on, on our projects, because, there, you know, it is a, a budget consideration, what have you. But, um, you know, as uh, Matt and Kevin says, it, it looks like similar projects or similar products have been used in the Dublin area. Um, I can't specifically identify those locations uh, yet. We can take a look at that, but certainly we can research more, provide you the information on, on this product, see similar products. And, you know, as uh, Kevin and Matt say, you know, we, there's always the fallback to, you know, the, the current approved materials, but, uh, you know, we do think this would be a better product in the long run. That's helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Again, I think seeing it and, and, like you said, providing some examples of where else this may have been used um, just to understand the, and it's hard when it's a new product, right? To demonstrate the durability and those things um, if people are just starting to use it. But that's all, that's all part of the consideration of that, that particular material. And that will give us a chance to, while you're providing that for us to look into these other examples, just to understand what materials um, were used for that as well. Does anybody else have any questions or want to comment on the material piece of this? Okay. Uh, Nikki, what other things do you want our feedback on so that there's, make sure we have clear direction as this moves forward towards the determination part? Yeah, no, I appreciate you all um, touching on the easement, the mechanical enclosure, and then also the material. Um, you know, just want some confirmation that the ART would be comfortable with staff working with the applicant to do some administrative approval of some site furnishing, lighting, and those may be final details that are better decided um, in the field. Um, and then lastly, um, maybe just raising up for the group's awareness. Um, you know, there is an approved master sign plan for the Dublin Village Center. 
um, you know, this uh, tenant space or tenants, depending on how that's sliced and diced, um, would be eligible uh, for the approved master sign plan um, and any um, additional ground signage, we would need to look at that with the applicant really outside of this minor project review process. Okay. Are you going to also add the landscape, uh, working with the staff on landscape to make sure we get salt tolerance and such? Yeah, we can definitely do that. That's a great comment that we'll incorporate. Okay, so from your perspective, Nikki, so again, you're having, you have enough feedback to go on with for this to then come back to ART for a final determination at a subsequent meeting. And in the meantime, we can look at um, addressing some of these pieces and giving some more direction on the material in terms of what the process is. Kevin, do you have any other questions or things you want feedback from us on? At this uh, point? No, I think that's, oh, sorry. I think that's uh, great for where we are right now. Um, Obviously, like I said, it, as long as Nikki is, or you guys give Nikki or staff the approval for this, like I said, some of the furnishing or the, how we finalize this trash enclosure, what material that might be. Um, I think that was kind of the stuff that Nikki and I, it, the landscaping now, uh, those were the couple of items that, that, like I said, may be better field figured out and I'd love to work with her on it. I think we always get good good, good advice from her and uh, can figure that out pretty regularly. Um, but besides that, it's the material. So, you know, we can figure that out as well. We go one way or the other. And um, outside of that, as long as you guys didn't have any other questions, I mean, I think it's it speaks for itself and said it, it, it's a great project for what we're looking at. Okay, I think that's, yeah, that's great. So I guess continue to work with Nikki and then we'll, okay. you can come back, you know, to us for the final approval on this and we'll we'll have some answers about the materials ahead of that as well. So, okay, that'd great. be great. Okay, great. Well, thank, thank you, you everybody. For, appreciate it. Okay, so the next item on our agenda is a determination for uh, the Cheesecake Girl, and Chase is the presenter for that. Or Zach, I'm sorry, it's Zach. It's easy to get us mixed up. I understand. No, it's not. I apologize. So. Just one moment. All right. Good afternoon. Uh, this is an application for review and determination of a minor project. Uh, this is for a single tenant space within the shops at River Ridge. Uh, this tenant space is the furthest east uh, tenant space in the southernmost building of the shopping center. It is located within the Bridge Street District and is zoned commercial. To give you a better understanding of the specific tenant, tenant space, uh, it is shown on the screen. Uh, the applicant is proposing the installation uh, of a walk-up window system located within that blue circle or blue rectangle on the screen that is not a circle. Um, they will be replacing the existing double hung window on this south on this east elevation uh, for a walk up service window for customers uh, that may just want to pick up their their orders outside without going inside the business. Uh, this service bay window will uh, be walk up. It will not be a drive through. And it will have the same finish as the existing windows located on this tenant space. Um, planning staff is recommending that the applicant provide uh, benches for seating for their customers uh, with the addition of this um, of this installation of the service window, and that'd be subject to staff's approval and also landlord approval. Uh, the applicant is also proposing to change the canopy canvases for the three awnings, uh, which are shown in this rendering on the screen. Um, there are three existing awning canopies that are closed end and traditional in style that are currently blue. The applicant is proposing to change these from blue to a light blue and white striped uh, awning. The structure of the awnings will not be changed with this application. It will just be the canvas uh, coverings for the awnings. Planning staff has reviewed this to all applicable criteria and are recommending approval with the one condition 
regarding the benches out, outside. Um, if anyone has questions for staff, I'd be happy to answer them. We also have uh, the applicants here with us to answer any questions or make any comments on the application. Thank you. Great, thank you, Zach. Uh, does anybody have any questions initially for Zach? If not, I'll allow the applicant to share any additional information or items for consideration as part of this. Okay, does the applicant have anything to share with ART? Uh, just, uh, uh, we're fine with that. Uh, basically everything is approved except uh, for the change of outdoor benches and we'll reach out to the landlord and make sure uh, that's okay with them. And, and then we'll run benches past you all what you need. And, and we also want to change all the exterior siding to some weird material. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, it was too easy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was. It was. We just delivered that right on the silver platter. Um, <laughs> no, that's great. Okay, and we appreciate you know you making the improvements and adding a little character to this corner of the building. Um, and glad glad to work with you on that. And appreciate your working with the landlord to get some additional seating. It feels like again, given COVID and what people wanting to be outside and experiencing that, it seemed like that'd be a good good fit there. So you can work with Zach to sort that out. To any I, I do have oh, go ahead. Sorry. I'm sorry. I do have one question. Um, mm -hmm. Due to timing, because we're, we're working with contractors and, and all that fun stuff, um, I wanted to find out with this approval, can that be done over time? In other words, with the signs, the awnings, and the window, um, we're, we're running into some fun stuff with timing and with uh, with with funding <laughs> for all of that. So I didn't know if we could do that over like a six to eight month window of time. In other words, we can get our main construction done, get our sign up, which that's a separate permit, I understand, um, and get that up and get open and then have those other pieces move into place, you know, following that. Zach, do you want to address the timing or Nikki? Yeah, um, so the, to clarify, and Mike pointed to this as well, uh, signage was shown in that rendering and um, they are aware that they would have to come back for approval of that, that signage. Um, the timing, yes, you'd be able to do it over that, you know, six to eight month span. Um, the, uh, I'm not quite sure on the, um, expiration of that approval. I don't know if Jenny, you have that information or if, uh, Nikki has it as well. Yeah. So there, um, you know, unlike some of our other boards and commissions is not a finite expiration date for the administrative review team approval. But assuming you have pulled building permits and are working toward completion of these items, um, we would consider that valid um, over the duration of you all moving in. So I would not um, anticipate any concerns with that. Um, just obviously would want you to be back before this uh, body sooner rather than later with your proposed sign, um, because subsequent to review of the sign by this body, you will need to go ahead and get a sign permit as well. I think you're muted, Mike. Sorry, I think uh, we've, we've met with multiple sign companies and have bids for that now, and uh, they're gonna submit those permits in, but I think we have one selected and gonna get started. So we'll have the front sign to begin with, because we have to have that according to the landlord and can get everything else going and then add the blade sign on the side and the awning switch out uh, as we move forward. Okay, that sounds all right. great. Thank yeah. you all very much. Yeah. Uh, do any ART members have any comments or questions for the applicant? Okay, if not, then um, I would entertain a motion for approval with one condition if somebody's willing to make that motion. I will. And a second. Sure. Thank you, Sean. Uh, Lori, can you call the roll, please? Sure. Um, Mr. Koretsky? Yes. Mr. Hamilton? Yes. Corporal Morris? Yes. Ms. Roush? Yes. Ms. Gilger? Yes. Mr. Stanford? Yes. Mr. Fagrell? Yes. Great. 
Thank you all very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Strange. And we look forward to seeing the improvements to, to this portion of the center. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And then our last case on the agenda is VA Data Building Number Five, also a determination. And uh, Mickey, I believe, is our case presenter for that. Great. Good afternoon. This is a, a request for review and determination for VA Data Building Five. Um, this is uh, the fifth and final building located on a 68-acre site um, in the uh, western portion of Dublin, um, located just east of Hoochard Road and south of uh, State Route 161. So as part of this uh, development, there was an initial master plan approved. Uh, the master plan included um, a series of five buildings which have been approved over time with the request before the board today for that fifth building. Additionally, the applicant has made modifications to the approved master plan, um, which I've highlighted here. Um, those modifications and approvals include uh, the addition of igloo storage, which is temperature controlled storage, um, just east of buildings one and two, the addition of antennas to the site, um, the addition of a booster station to the site and an associated accessory structure, a parking lot expansion, and then uh, the application before you today, um, which is the southernmost building on the site uh, is building five highlighted here in red. So it's important to note as we look at the site plan, uh, the proposed site plan for building five differs from um, the previously approved buildings on the site. Uh, the reason for this different uh, site plan is due to the uh, two-story nature of this building. So while this building um, is complementary to previously approved buildings on the site, uh, due to the site, the footprint of the building um, is modified. So this building is uh, just shy of 270,000 square feet in size. Of that, about 250,000 square feet is warehouse and data center, and about 20,000 square feet um, is dedicated for office use. Similar to previously approved buildings and located uh, to the north of this building is outdoor storage and service area. Um, this outdoor uh, storage and service area um, is limited in size based on the uh, gross floor area of the building. Given the uh, substantial size of this building, the outdoor storage and service area um, is uh, within the requirement and will be screened by a, a 17 and a half foot screen wall, which will limit views um, from all public rights of way and adjacent sites. This being the fifth building of development on the site, um, it is important to note that um, the, the Hoochard elevation as well as the south elevation um, and the east elevation are the primary um, elevations of this structure. Traditionally, um, as identified in the master plan, Hoochard Road has been designated as a front yard. Um, being a front yard, the uh, setbacks um, are determined by that street type. And for all other side and rear yard setbacks, those are determined by the building height. As Hoochard is a front yard, parking is not permitted to be in front of the structure um, unless it is on a limited basis as visitor parking. Um, given the uh, limited number of visitors to the site um, and the high security nature of these uses, uh, staff is uh, conditioning that the site plan be revised to move all parking uh, to the rear of the building. And this is consistent not only with the front yard designation, but also the originally approved master plan. With that site plan modification, staff does anticipate that this building will shift uh, to the east, which will um, better align with previously approved buildings. Uh, creating a continuous uh, street wall. Finally, uh, parking is required as part of this 
uh, new construction based on the total square footages and combination of uses, a total of 106 parking spaces are required. The applicant is proposing 90 parking spaces with this application and has requested to defer 16 parking spaces. The West Innovation District also provides uh, minimum bicycle parking requirements for this site. The minimum bicycle parking requirement is six spaces and the applicant is providing 10. As this is the fifth and final required building for development on this site, uh, the applicant is not eligible to defer parking as they have been eligible with previous applications. Staff is conditioning that the applicant work with us to uh, provide all required parking on site prior to building permit submittal and additionally to construct all required uh, parking on site prior to issuance of occupancy of building five. With that, uh, that uh, summarizes the uh, main site plan elements. The proposed building elevations are a combination of um, rectangular forms which uh, have a flat roof consistent with the established character of the data center complex. You'll note here the uh, combination of materials is identical to those used on previously approved buildings. However, the uh, design of the accent panels is horizontal and linear. Uh, given the two-story uh, composition of this building, staff is supportive of this alternate design as it meets the intent of the West Innovation District to um, incentivize building variety while also uh, retaining unifying features. The west elevation and rear elevation, as mentioned, are the primarily are the primary elevations with uh, most accessing the building from the rear and then obviously the visible elevation being the west elevation. The north and south elevations accentuate the uh, linear form of the structure and continue uh, that horizontal um, color band in a Sherwin-Williams watery blue. With that, staff has reviewed the application against the review criteria and um, has found the criteria met uh, with uh, five conditions. Those five conditions are identified here on the screen. Condition one is carried forward from previous applications um, in coordination uh, with the engineering division. Um, the temporary access point along Hoochard Road um, is required to be closed with completion of the permanent access point and landscaping restored. Um, the site layout um, be revised to relocate parking to the rear of the building. Uh, the applicant provide updated lot coverage information, and this is not specifically for this building pad, um, but for the entire site. Um, and this is really just for record keeping purposes. The fourth condition um, was previously touched on. And then of course, um, you know, as the site has been modified over time, um, allowing ourselves the flexibility um, to work with the city's landscape zoning inspector to finalize um, all landscape items and selections uh, through the building permit review stage. With that, um, the entire applicant team is here today, and I would be happy to answer any questions uh, you may have uh, for staff. Thank you. Nikki, I have, I have one question about uh, the setback. You said by moving the parking off of the, the Hoochard frontage, the building could push closer to the west to Hoochard Road to align with the other buildings, even though it's two story, it's allowed to get as close as the one stories? That's correct. Um, okay. For front yards, it's based on the street type and the street type is the same. Okay, I'm, I'm glad to hear that, okay. Great, thank you, Nikki. Um, would someone from the applicant team like to um, address, address the board or provide any additional information for consideration and maybe talk through the conditions that were proposed and, and how you plan to address those or if you have any issues with that? 
Certainly. Uh, this is Bernie Wojtek. I'm with HKS, the uh, architect for the project. Uh, and as, as mentioned earlier, we do have uh, the, the client and uh, Jim uh, Whitaker Roy, the uh, civil engineer uh, here as well, who could uh, answer these questions. But um, knowing how close we are to the time here, I'll be re relatively uh, brief going through the uh, conditions. Um, you know, the temporary access point, uh, it is intended as part of this project to make that a uh, permanent uh, entry point, um, basically uh, kind of a secondary emergency uh, entry only. It will not be the main entry to the site, but it will be uh, constructed with the uh, permanent gates and um, uh, access point uh, for uh, emergency um, and a secondary entrance. Um, uh, the uh, point about the uh, lot coverage calculations and uh, setbacks, uh, those, uh, when the drawings were uh, submitted, um, you know, at the time the drawings were about 60% and some of that information was not included on the drawings. We do have that information on the drawings and it will all be uh, present uh, when we uh, look to, uh, you know, apply for our permit application in, uh, you know, mid-February. And, you know, before we go on, I, I should have started with this, I really want to thank the board you know, anytime anyone gets anything before a holiday period and there's something immediately after, I realize it's, it's tough to kind of get those review comments in, but I appreciate the effort that you put into this, you know, during the holidays and difficult times we're going through uh, as well to make sure that uh, we were reviewed and on the agenda today. So just a quick thank you on that. Um, the, uh, as far as the deferred parking, um, actually the, uh, on the main uh, site in the northeast corner, there's a, a, a large uh, parking lot area that was containing all of the deferred parking. Uh, that area actually is currently um, permitted and, you know, come uh, spring thaw when the asphalt plants and everything open, uh, that will actually be constructed. So all the deferred parking uh, for the uh, site master plan will be uh, constructed uh, you know, probably even before the construction on this project starts, so that um, deferred parking will be kind of completed uh, prior to uh, this project being uh, completed. Uh, we will be, um, in GEM, uh, civil and landscape teams will be working with the uh, uh, zoning inspector to finalize the landscape items. Uh, and the last item, I just, probably the biggest uh, talking point was the uh, relocating the parking that was on the east side. Um, you know, it, it, it's not, you know, we although there's limited visitor parking, we do have visitor parking, but it, it, it sounds as if, um, you know, from the, the number of spots that are allocated there that you really do not want um, that much parking uh, located on um, uh, Huchard Road. Um, we are looking at uh, possibilities of relocating that. Uh, I, was, I would just like to know if, is there any open, is, is the board open to discussing keeping any parking there, or is it really uh, required, or not required, but uh, desired to have all of it moved? Uh, and Nikki can jump in here too. I think the challenge is the way the code is written that it has to be to the side or rear. And if you wanted to do something different, that request would have to be um, were kicked up to the Planning and Zoning Commission for review and approval. That's okay. that's not within our authority. It's similar to the very first case on the agenda. We have certain authorities to approve particular things. And if you want to deviate from that, then there is a um, a, a higher body, if you will, that has the authority to do that. So that, unfortunately, that, we don't have a lot of leeway at this level. That, that, that's okay. And we've, uh, you know, even just since receiving this uh, notification this morning, we've been uh, reviewing it and looking at uh, options, uh, locating the parking elsewhere. We might not move it to the east. We might have it either on the south or the north of the building uh, in, in different locations, but moving it to, like you said, to the side uh, or the front of the building. There's there are certain uh, issues with moving it to the front of the building and shifting the building down, which uh, kind of complicates matters uh, from an um, engineering standpoint on the site. But, um, you know, there, there are options so that we could remove it from the Huchard Road, uh, locating it on uh, the sides and not just the east side, but uh, the north and south as well. 
Okay. And I think that that addresses the five, uh, you know, con conditions. I don't know if, if Jim or uh, um, Andrew, uh, who's with the client, want to address anything in addition. I, I, I guess just maybe to clarify that, you know, if we eliminate the parking in front of the building, that uh, staff would be okay with the existing building location, um, you know, and not pushing it up against the Putrid Road. Uh, like Bernie mentioned, that does uh, cause some complications uh, from an uh, engineering standpoint and from an extension of utilities. And then also, um, since it is a two-story building and all the others are one story, we kind of think maybe having it a little farther back actually would uh, take away from the feeling that all of a sudden you jump up to two stories. Okay. I think that makes sense. There's nothing in the code requiring you to align them. I think we were just, yeah, it seemed logical. If you had to remove the parking on one side, you would, you know, push it to the other side and the building would shift. So again, I think you can, however you want to work with staff to accomplish that and again, it ultimately, it all needs to be provided on your site unless you get approval from the Planning Commission. So however you want to work with staff to, to make that work within the parameters of the code, I think, again, unless Nikki tells me otherwise, um, that would be, you know, that'd be our recommendation, which is why those conditions are left to you working with staff to figure that out because, you no, know, there are, when it gets to the last building, it always seems like everything's converging and you have to figure out how to fit all these last pieces on there. Um, I don't know what, if other board members have comments or concerns you related to the building location or any other items discussed. Colleen, did you turn? I saw you and Aaron. So it, ladies first, Aaron, sorry. Well, we were talking about, we were talking about parking. So the, the only question was there, there are 16 short that they would need to make up for. Are there other parking deferrals for the other four buildings? And if so, what's that total number? Um, possible to to create those with the parking lot that we have on the, the northern portion of the site closest to the, the main entry? Yeah, the parking lot, once that's built up by the main entry, then we've got more than enough spaces to cover all of the buildings. Um, it's actually have, it's about 50 extra spaces once that's built. Um, so the parking that we have around this building was mainly just from an operation standpoint to so that people wouldn't have to park all the way out at the front to come back to this building. So um, we've got flexibility there, I think. And, and at the end of the day, there'll be more than the required parking on the site. Okay. Aaron? Yeah, I think yeah, I just want to talk briefly about the access point because what I what I heard was a change from kind of what at least what I was assuming when I looked at the plans. So I guess a few things. If that access point is going to become uh, a permanent point, even if it's emergency access only, we have to remember that that's subject to Franklin County uh, Engineer's Office their approval since that's their roadway. From an access management standpoint, I don't have an objection to it. Um, you know, it's not located near an intersection. There's not a lot of driveways around it. But what I am curious is maybe a little bit of discussion because anytime we've we've worked on this site, um, you know, rightly so, there's been there's been a lot of emphasis about um, security to the site and how we access it. Uh, I know we've already worked we've reworked the security gates at one point. Do we have the information in the plans that are that are before us that show us any other additional security measures that would be, I guess, at this gate if it was emergency access or a secondary point? So just to kind of understand, I want to be flexible about what we can approve. But one, we need to we need to get on the record and probably in a condition if we allow that it has to be subject to Franklin County's approval. And then maybe just a little bit more discussion about if there's any additional security measures or, or limitations to that access point. Yeah, and so um, there, there always has been the um, assumption that this is this was just a temporary while construction was happening access point and <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> it's always been um, that the applicant has been saying that each building um, as we go that you know by the time we do the fifth building that will go away by the time we do the fifth building um, so I guess I was surprised to hear that there was a request to make that permanent because I always believe that the applicant wanted that to go away so uh, um, I, I am a little curious about that because I do know there's very limited visitors. Yeah, I, 
I don't know that we know for sure from an operations standpoint that that would be used by anyone other than emergency uh, personnel. Um, I think the we do probably do at least from a fire standpoint need a secondary access there for emergency vehicles, and that's what we'd always intended that at a bare minimum that access point would be for emergency vehicles. Um, and we do realize that that's in Franklin County jurisdiction, and, and we need to get a, a right away permit from them uh, for that. Um, but I don't know what other information you're looking for from a security standpoint. I mean, it would definitely be a, a, a secured gate uh, that would not have free access in and out. So, so it would be something like a, it would be locked with a Knox box and just the fire can get in or? I believe that's what it's going to be, but we're waiting uh, from the security team to find out exactly what they want that that gate to look like. I, I don't know that we know the answer to that right now, whether it would be a, um, a just a permanently locked gate or, or a, a, a manned gate. So, Aaron, what else would you need to to do that? Do we need to modify the condition? Because that's different, again, I think, than what we're... Or do you want to table this until we get that resolved? How do you want to handle that? I'm okay with modifying the condition as long as is uh, Chad and Washington Township are okay with the information we have and hearing what we're hearing. I'm, I'm assuming that he wouldn't mind having additional access to the site. Um, I mean, for me, the the, act, the uh, condition just needs to indicate and put on into the language that they are required to get that uh, approval through Franklin County. Just so for the record, we're not approving something that without their no acknowledging that they have the approval authority. Chad, what are your thoughts on this from the Washington Township front. I have no issues with the gate. I'm just concerned over how they're going to lock it, whether it's going to be manned or with a security building there. And typically, if they man this, they would build a, a a small building out there for their personnel that's manning that gate. Uh, so I'd be interested to see how they're going to handle that. Um, I doubt that this facility is going to allow us to put a Knox lock on that. So they would probably install a Knox box out there, but uh, I doubt they'll let us double lock their lock. So I just like to kind of see how they're going to address the security of that fence or gate. And then I'd be fine. Okay. So maybe Nikki, you can, I'm sure you're working on it. Um, add the condition to address Chad's concerns. Anyone else? Um, Bill, do you have any security or any concerns from your perspective? Yeah, just the same ones Chad mentioned about the, whether it would be a manned gate or, or there'd be some way that we could access it in an, in an emergency. Okay. Anyone else have any other questions or concerns? Okay. Otherwise, Nikki, you feel comfortable with the other conditions and the information provided and discussed that meets the conditions as you outlined them? Um, I think one thing to maybe raise for the applicant team is should this be a manned gate, um, you would need to appear before the administrative review team for approval of whatever um, accessory structure um, might be built as part of that. Um, so something to keep in mind, obviously, we have no details before us today, so we wouldn't be able to approve that as part of this approval site unseen. Um, so we'll need to continue to work through that. Um, one other item I'd like to raise um, just based on the applicant's conversation is the condition as written requires all parking uh, to be located to the rear of the building. Um, I would be happy to adjust that um, to allow them the flexibility to locate that to the side or the rear. Um, although I would like um, to see the building shift toward Hoochard Road, um, and maybe that's not to the full extent of the other buildings. Um, but I think that, um, you know, from a from a planning standpoint, uh, closing that setback gap 
um, is something that uh, we would like to see. And I would just raise that uh, to the administrative review team for your consideration. Uh, Jim, could you maybe talk through what what the sort of specific issues are, just so we can help make an informed decision or recommendation on that? Uh, with with moving the building. Yes, sorry. Front. Um, yeah, we've got a, a few things. I, I mean, one is the you know the electric feeds all come from the uh, the substation. So the farther we move the building from the substation, the the longer those electric feeds are, uh, which which do present a, a challenge. And also the uh, the fiber optic feeds that that uh, feed all of these buildings run from uh, the west side. Or I'm sorry, the east side of the site, the site farthest from Hutchard Road. Uh, so that again requires extending all of those farther to get to the building the closer it gets to Hoochard Road and then also just from a constructability standpoint we tried to leave as much room on the end of the road where the construction access will be uh, to provide some sort of lay down area uh, but it's still going to be extremely hard to construct this building um, with it being the last building on the campus, it's going to be very tight to provide any type of laid out area and and uh, place for uh, you know construction to be staged. Uh, so that that's going to be a, a big challenge. And so if we we're trying to leave as much area out front there to to do that and provide construction access. And Bernie, you may you, if you want to chime in with some any other reasons uh, you know why we wouldn't want to push the building towards Hoocher. I, I mean, you touched on the main points, the, uh, and the other thing that you did mention earlier, with this being a taller two-story building, you know, the, we were looking at keeping it a little further from the road because of that. And also, with the, with the fields, the athletic fields to the south, we actually felt, you know, we made an effort here, you know, considering what was located there. Originally, all of the generators and the whole yard was going to be facing that uh, those fields, but we made a conscious effort to you know move that equipment away from those fields. So we flipped it to the north side of the building, and uh, we honestly felt by pulling it back from the road, um, it had less impact on those fields. You know, just you know opening them more to the road to the view that way. I mean, that was just one of the things that was taken into consideration. So. It was it was, it was a, a number of things went into the decision to uh, keep it tighter to the east than uh, pushing it to the west. And one other thing that you got that plan up now, you can see the the pink area. I guess the outdoor generator yards. Um, you can see that they do extend uh, beyond the building, and and so we're we're pretty limited on how far that can push forward. And again, we were trying to keep the those uh, generator yards back away from the road as far as we could. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't think we would want the generator piece of that shoved any any closer. Um, I mean, is there an opportunity to shift the building a, a little bit to align with that um, sort of the pink area um, on that closer end? I, I totally understand your concerns. Just trying to figure out what the yeah. Sort of I, if you go to the other end, there's, go ahead, Bernie. I, I was going to say, unfortunately, that that yard um, and with the loading dock and everything located there, basically, if the building shifts, that yard has to shift, and and that yard, you, you know, is, is as tight as it can possibly be, you know, to allow proper airflow around the generators and everything. Um, you know, our intent was to have it not extend past the building, but because of the equipment in there. Uh, and everything else, uh, you know, that's the extent of the yard. And, you know, with the loading dock being located there uh, on that side of the building, it, shifting it basically shifts the yard as well. So it, it, our hands are really tied with that. Okay. Uh, ART, I guess what I'm looking to you to see what your, what your thoughts are or other suggestions. I do appreciate you know, what you're saying about Flipping and putting the the yard on the inside as opposed to the outside, I think that that definitely was a good good choice and support support that for sure. Is there any landscaping planned in between that western proposed lot and 
Putrid Road. I mean, is that something we could do as a compromise? Nikki, do is there any additional landscape? I know they're obviously they did their initial landscape around the perimeter, obviously at the beginning of the project, but no, there's no additional landscaping. It's shown as lawn. Is that something you'd be willing to to try to incorporate there? Uh, looking to the applicant on on that, some additional screening again, since that will sort of be forward of the of the building front there along Hoochard. I I think that's a viable option. You know, if if it means we could keep the building in its current location, I I think that is we'd be able to work that in. Okay. Uh, yeah, Sean, Colleen, any, Aaron, anybody have any thoughts about that? Yeah, I was just going to say, I don't remember what was originally there uh, to work with to uh, increase that screening, but uh, definitely could be done easily. Okay. Um, well, maybe then I guess I would recommend adding a condition that you work with staff to look at determining some appropriate landscaping to screen that um, area. Again, I, I do appreciate and I, and I agree with the building being set back with at the two-story height. I actually I agree that that is a good solution as well, just because I think it will seem not jarring is not the right word, but it'll it'll be in a, it's different right than what's out there and just wanting to, to try to soften that maybe that helps too. Um, that edge there too. That's good. Thank you, Aaron. That was a great suggestion. Do we want to simulate evergreen as part of that uh, screening? Can you say that one more time, Sean? <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I said, uh, do we want to stipulate evergreen as part of that? Every ARTA members, everyone okay with, with that recommendation? Yeah, okay. Okay, maybe Nikki, when you're done, you can show us those conditions and the applicant can take a look at that, see if they have any other questions or clarifications and staff or ART members can make sure that represents all their concerns before we take a final vote on this. For number two, maybe adding something that that's related to that Hoochard Road access point. Uh, while she's adding that as the applicant, uh, either Bernie or Jim, do you have um, any other questions or feedback or you're in agreement with the conditions as Nikki drafted them? Oh, Bernie, I think Bernie. Bernie. Sorry. Not everyone's up on lip reading, I guess. Uh, uh, from what was discussed, I, I don't see any major issues. Uh, Jim, it sounds like you're on board too. Um, Andrew, do you see anything that stood out from the client side? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Bernie. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, everybody. Okay, great. Um, and I'm confirming, Nikki, that we don't have any public comment for this application. Sorry, too many ones. Uh, we do not. Okay, great. And I, I feel like, Bernie, we will, by the end of this, all be very good at lip reading for sure. That should be a skill. <laughs> Anyway, okay, so with that, um, unless anybody has anything else, if somebody would like to make a motion with the seven conditions, that would be great. Hey, Jenny, real quick, sorry oh, to yeah. interrupt. Oh, you're fine. So condition three, I, I'm just to make sure I'm, a, I'm on the same page, where we landed was there is a potential or there is a proposal to have parking in between the building and Hoochard Road, correct? No, the parking no. will be removed. From okay, that never mind, then I'm absolutely side. fine. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 
I think the only change there was uh, taking it from the front to, and it said originally to the rear, but we changed it to the rear and side. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, great. So thank you for clarifying, Aaron. So with that, then somebody willing to make a motion with those seven conditions? Can I see the conditions one more time? I'm sorry. This one has a lot. So before I, I voted on, I just want to make sure that we've added. Okay. All right, thank you. Are you making a motion, Colleen? I will make a motion, <laughs> yes, to approve with the seven conditions. Okay, thank you. Uh, can I have a second, please? I'll second. Thank you, Aaron. Um, so, Lori, can you call the roll, please? Um, Ms. Roush? Yes. Ms. Gilger? Yes. Mr. Korotsky? Yes. Mr. Hamilton? Yes. Mr. Fagrell? Yes. Corporal Morris? Yes. And Mr. Stanford? Yes. Great, thank you all very much and look forward to seeing your, your final building uh, on this site. That's, that's been amazing. So to see it coming to fruition. So thank you. Thanks yes. for working with us. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you all well. the feedback. Much. Okay. With that, unless anybody has anything else, we'll be adjourned. So if y'all can hang tight um, until Chase stops the live stream uh, before we have any further discussion.